joining us for our daily gospel reflection. My name is Maureen Demler. I serve as deacon at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Wednesday in the second week of Lent. Let us pray. O oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word, Jesus Christ, your Son, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. is from the Gospel according to John, the fifth chapter beginning at the first verse. After this, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your mat. But he answered them, The man who made me well said to me, Take up your mat and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take it up and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had disappeared in the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. Therefore, the Jews started persecuting Jesus because he was doing such things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, my father is still working, and I also am working. For this reason, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because he was not only breaking the Sabbath, but was also calling God his own father, thereby making himself equal to God. Here ends the reading. Today's reflection comes from Max Licato's book, he still moves stones. It's called Bethesda. It could be called Central Park, St. Peter's Hospital, or even Ravenswood. It could be the homeless huddled beneath the downtown overpass. It could be St. George's. It could be any collection of hurting people. An underground spring caused the pool to bubble occasionally. The people believed the bubbles were caused by the dipping of angels' wings. They also believed that the first person to touch the water after the angel did would be healed. Did healing occur? I don't know. But crowds of invalids came to give it a try. Picture a battleground strewn with wounded bodies. 
Imagine a nursing home overcrowded and understaffed. Call to mind orphans in Bangladesh or the abandoned in New Delhi, and you will see what people saw when they passed Bethesda. What did they hear? An endless wave of groans. What did they witness? A field of need. What did they do? Most people walk past, ignoring the people, but not Jesus. He is in Jerusalem for a feast. He's alone. He's not there today to teach the disciples or to draw a crowd. People need him, so he's there. Jesus walking among the suffering. What is he thinking? When an infected hand touches his ankle, what does he do? When a blind child stumbles in his path, does he reach down to catch him? When a wrinkled hand extends for alms, how does Jesus respond? Whether the watering hole is Bethesda or Ravenswood, how does God feel when people hurt? It's worth the telling of this story if all we do is watch him walk. It's worth it just to know he even came. He didn't have to. Surely there are more sanitary crowds in Jerusalem. Surely there are more enjoyable activities. After all, this is the Passover feast. It's an exciting time. People have come from miles around to meet God in the temple. Little do they know that God is with the sick. Little do they know that God is walking slowly, stepping carefully between the beggars and the blind. Little do they know that the strong young carpenter who surveys the ragged landscape of pain is God. Let us pray. Forgive us, Father, for any time we have ignored the needs of others. Help us respond to the suffering around us. Fill us with your love. Give us your compassion for the hurting, your love for the despised, and your mercy for the afflicted. Amen.